Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. It is officially June 30th. It is the end of the month and today is an insane day. Literally, not only is the internet in shambles right now, but so is Twitter, so is my DMs, and so is my damn brain, okay? For y'all who don't know what's going on, which you may know by now because it's breaking news worldwide, Bill Cosby just got released from prison. His sentence has been overturned and vacated. This is insane. This is a crazy turn of events, but something, honey, y'all know I'm the, you know, I'm the queen of damn conspiracies. My tin hat is just tingling and it's really hard to even verbalize everything that I'm thinking, but I'm going to try my best to break this down during this podcast. So what I want to do first is kind of refresh everybody's mind as to how Bill Cosby got here in the first place. So if you guys don't know, back in 2005, Andrea Costan, she had sued Bill Cosby back in 2005, she filed a civil lawsuit and basically it was resolved for an undisclosed cash settlement. And at the time when the lawsuit was going on, Bill Cosby was told, if you just admit to what you did, you can pay her off and all of this will be done. You know, you'll be able to move on with your life. So Bill Cosby ended up admitting under oath to basically drugging her and she got her cash settlement. So now fast forward a few years later, all of a sudden these rape allegations and these drugging allegations are brought back to the forefront by comedians. 60 women were all coming out saying that Bill Cosby drugged and raped them. It was insane. Here go all the women here on the New York Times magazine. And so Bill Cosby ended up getting sentenced to 10 years back in 2018. And thus far, he has served three years. I want to go ahead and play you guys this video really quick. Led away in handcuffs, a searing image of a man once adored and celebrated, now on his way to prison. The 81-year-old sentenced to three to 10 years for drugging and sexually assaulting former Temple employee Andrea Constant in 2004, meaning he cannot seek parole until he's served at least three years. Finally, Bill Cosby has been unmasked, and we have seen the real man as he is headed off to prison. The defense team fought for home arrest because of the comedian's age and health, but Judge Stephen O'Neill was not convinced, basing his verdict, he said, on the seriousness of the crime and Andrea Constant's own words. She described the night of her assault in a statement to the court. I couldn't move my arms or legs. I couldn't speak or even remain conscious. I was completely vulnerable and powerless to protect myself. Constant testified in the trial and the retrial, was in court for both verdicts, and again this week for the sentencing. Miss Constant be speaking at all today? I just want today, to when she was asked to react, she just smiled again. and shook her head. For many of the more than 60 women who have accused Cosby of sexual misconduct, ranging from verbal abuse to rape, this sentence is vindication. Is it relief today? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's going to take time for us all to process. Right now we're just caught in the throes of of the emotion, you know, tears and and laughter and, and nervousness and confusion. Cosby also now classified as a sexually violent predator. After prison, he has to register as a sex offender, meet with police four times a year, report any change of address, and get counseling. Cosby has denied the dozens of allegations against him from the beginning. This case, the only one that led to criminal charges. After court today, his spokesman blasted the process. This has been the most racist and sexist trial in the history of the United States. The defense team says it will appeal, but now Bill Cosby will have to fight back from behind prison walls. All right, so you guys just watch that. So basically, they took what was supposed to be a civil case and then used that for their aha moment and proof for the criminal case. So a lot of people were saying back then, like, well, this doesn't make any sense because he had already signed an affidavit saying that he would admit to it, but that he could not be prosecuted 
but that he could not be prosecuted criminally. And yet he was. So he's been sitting in prison for the past three years. Now, what I find very interesting is that today they decided to vacate this. They decided to basically release him from prison. And the thing that I find very interesting about the situation is that if you remember, just last month, he was up for parole and he was denied. It hasn't even been a whole month. He went up for parole on May 28th. He was petitioning the court and he was denied. And the main reason why they're saying that he was denied is because he refused therapy. And they're saying being that he didn't want to go and get the therapy needed, that he would still be a danger to society. So I find it very, very interesting that in less than a month later, okay, this was just May. Now it's June 30th. The whole thing has been thrown out. But now here's where the rabbit hole goes deeper. Now I see a lot of black folks celebrating and you know, they're looking at this as a win and you know, and I get that, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like there's more to this story and a lot of people are upset. It's definitely causing the whole black white divide on social media. And I'm gonna just show you guys some of the tweets and stuff as I'm talking of people really, really mad because they feel like, okay, he is a rapist. He did confess on tape and now they're vacating everything. But the thing is, they had no right to charge him based off of the sweetheart deal. Let's keep it real. This was a sweetheart deal that he made with prosecutors. Now, what I find very interesting, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the guy who gave Bill Cosby that sweetheart deal is the same guy that was involved in the Trump impeachment. OK, he was Trump's attorney during the whole impeachment debacle. And his name is Bruce Castor. My name is Bruce Castor. I am the lead prosecutor, lead uh, counsel for the 45th president of the United States. But I do understand the difference, Mr. Reskin. <laughs> Manslaughter and murder. You could grow up to be a United States senator. Congress shall make no law abridging all of these things that they be convicted first. It happens. I worked in this building 40 years ago. I got lost then and I still do. Remember people made a bunch of videos and memes and everything else. So he's the one who made a promise back in 2005 when he was a DA to not prosecute Bill Cosby. This was supposed to be a civil matter and I have the court uh, documents here as well, but I'm gonna read you guys an excerpt from that court document. And here it says, in accordance with the evidence, his attorney, Bill Cosby relied upon the DA Castor's public announcement that he would not be prosecuted. His reliance was reasonable and it resulted in, in deprivation of a fundamental constitutional right when he was compelled to furnish self-incriminating testimony. So that is what they used in today's hearing to get it overthrown. So now this is from the information that was released today. And they have that information from the court documents from 2005. The Montgomery County District Attorney Bruce Castor learned that Andrea Costan had reported William Cosby had sexually assaulted her in, tw in 2004. So basically what they're saying is that Castor, the DA at the time, he said that because there was no corroborating forensic evidence, because the testimony from other potential claimants against Bill Cosby were likely admissible under the governing law of evidence, that the collective weight of these considerations led D.A. Castor to conclude that unless Bill Cosby confessed, there was insufficient, credible, admissible evidence upon which any charges against Bill Cosby related to the Costan incident could be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. So seeking some measure of justice, quote unquote, for Costan, the DA decided that the Commonwealth would decline to prosecute Cosby for the incident involving Costan, thereby allowing Cosby to be forced to testify in a subsequent civil action under penalty of perjury without benefits of his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Okay, so that is why Bill Cosby got up there because he was promised something and then they later on years down the line used it against him. Now, what I find very disturbing about this race aside, let's just talk about the fact. Let's talk about money first and foremost. Okay, I find it very interesting that Bill Cosby was able to confess to a crime and get a sweetheart deal where he didn't face any prosecution. Everything was supposed to be sealed. And this man, the DA, later on ends up being Trump's attorney. 
What I also find very interesting is the ties to Jeffrey Epstein. And this is what a lot of people aren't really looking at. And this is what we're kind of piecing together slowly but surely, me and a few people, you know, we're just bouncing information off of each other. Because remember when Jeffrey Epstein, when he was first prosecuted um, for the things that he did to those young girls, because if you guys remember, Alex Alexander Acosta, at the time that Jeffrey Epstein was being charged and these victims were coming out against him, Mr. Acosta was a federal prosecutor in Florida, okay? And he was the one who gave Jeffrey Epstein a sweetheart deal. This man barely got any time. He was able to come and go out the jail. It was insane. Nobody had ever seen a deal like this before. And then in turn, he ends up being Trump's labor secretary. And he ended up having to resign in disgrace once everything came out about Jeffrey Epstein. So something about this whole Bill Cosby situation, while I'm glad that he's out because technically he was never supposed to be in there, per the sweetheart deal. So let's keep that real. But what bothers me with this situation is I kind of feel like it may be a distraction and I feel like it may be a cover for something deeper. Because if you really look at the connection between all of these people, something is not clean in the buttermilk. For instance, did you know that Bill Cosby lived across the street from Jeffrey Epstein for years? And when people have money like that and notoriety, they tend to click up and hang together and, and things like that. You know, just like he was hanging with Hugh Hefner. And Hugh Hefner was accused of a lot of these same crimes and these sex rings. But yeah, he lived across the street from Jeffrey Epstein. Here goes an article from the Chicago Tribune, and it says here, Prosecutors in New York are seeking to forfeit Epstein's mansion, a seven-story, 21,000-square-foot townhome, less than a block from Central Park. The home was formerly a prep school, is across the street from a home owned by Bill Cosby, and has been valued at approximately $77 million. So they lived right across the street from each other. Now, what I also find interesting, if you guys do not know, okay, here goes another connection that's making my damn tin hat tingle. Ghislaine Maxwell, the female pervert of all female perverts. She came out back in April, just a few months ago. Her team is really upset about her treatment. And this is what they're saying. They're saying that Ghislaine Maxwell says she's being treated worse than the men like Bill Cosby, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, and Harvey Weinstein. So this is what um, they're saying, basically. The truth is that wealthy men charged with similar or more serious offenses, many of whom have foreign ties, are routinely granted bail so that they can effectively prepare for trial. Maxwell's attorney, David Oscar Marcus, wrote in papers filed with the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Miss Maxwell is entitled to the same opportunities as the male defendants to prepare for her defense. So I feel like something definitely goes deep with this. Now, here goes another tie that one of my discorders um, DM me. Because we've been kind of trying to figure out all this shit too with the whole death of John McAfee. So if you guys do not know, what we found very interesting is that not only about the tattoo that I spoke about where he stated that he would never kill himself and he got the tattoo dollar sign whacked on his arm, but if you guys do not know, before Instagram deleted McAfee's page, the Discorder screenshotted the page. And what we found very interesting is that the third picture to the right is a picture of McAfee and guess who's behind him? Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein is behind him. And then the very last post he posted was the QAnon symbol. OK, and we all know that John McAfee was a big conspiracy theorist. He definitely believed in the whole QAnon situation. And we just find it very interesting that he was killed not even a week ago. Now Bill Cosby is out. A month and a half ago, Jelaine Maxwell was over there crying tattoo tears about her treatment. I feel like deep down inside, all this shit is connected. And here goes the screenshot. When you go to his page now, everything has been wiped clean. So something is very, very strange about this. You know, was Bill Cosby sent in there as some type of humiliation ritual? Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. 
Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.